So Y, W, T, and L. Hi everyone, today I'm going to bring you some of my neutral colours. So last time I spoke to you, I was showing you a lot of blue fabrics, which were from my colour palette. Now, if you don't know what the colour palette is, it's um, a set or a range of colours with the tone and the various shades which are most suited to your complexion with your ha your skin, um, skin tone, your hair colour and your eye colour. There is a free app that you can use, that you can download if you haven't had them done by a professional. It's a, and the app is just a quick guide to sort of give you a rough idea of what the colours um, suit you most. It's what I've used and actually if you check out the hashtag on Instagram, lots of people have been using it because it's free, it's a cheap alternative for that and it's, uh, it's coming out quite accurate. So I've come out as a cool winter, which means the range of colours suggested to me are the ones which are most suited um, to complement my skin colours and everything and also just make me look my best. Now I've spoken in the past about some of the fabrics and things and the colours that I've worn. I haven't wanted to wear particular clothes that I've made and I think a lot of it is down to the colours. So this week I thought I would just show you, I am back from work and this is what I wore to work today. Now black is part of my colour palette um, and I had, to tell you what, the truth is, in September, when I went back to work after summer, because I work in a school, from September right through to, I want to say Christmas, I wore black every single day to work and nobody noticed. It was quite funny actually, because it's like normally that's the first thing you notice, someone's got a new top or wearing a colour they wouldn't normally wear, you would sort of pass comment or compliment, you would sort of notice, you know, and ask people where they got it from. No comments, no one noticed that I, um, I wore a different black top and different style, but black every day for five days a week and black trousers and either brown shoes or black shoes, I just have two pairs of work shoes. Um, and what I did it because I wanted to press like the reset button on my wardrobe. I, I was confused about what my style was, what colour suited me, I hadn't done the colour analysis, I didn't know what, what I wanted to wear, what I didn't, I don't know why certain things have been hanging in my wardrobe that I made and I hadn't worn so I thought right I've watched Dawn from The Minimal Mum if you um, are into decluttering and more of a minimalist lifestyle she is one to check out and I will link her channel down below but she did a video about how she wore black um, and decided that that's what she was going to wear because she didn't have to think about coordinating colours and what outfit she was going to wear and did she wear that to that place or saw those friends last time when she wearing the same outfit so she started to wear black and I thought okay I'll just give this a try so here I am I have worn colour recently but this is what I decided to wear today to work it was just easy to sling on and on that theme, I'll show you some of the fabrics that I purchased this month, which are from that more neutral colour palette. So anything which has like yellowy undertones, like a cream or a beige, just kind of drains the colour from my face. So I'll show you what I've got. I've got three main ones because I showed you some of the blacks in my previous video. So I bought some French terry, and this is to make a sweatshirt, which I will come to in a moment because the fabric is not good quality. But um, I'll just show you for the shading. So it's starting to get dark here, so I have got the conservatory lights on, so it might affect the colour. So we have a grey. Um, now I think grey, I think the grey came up in, as part of my colour palette. So I can wear it as it is a cool grey, but any kind of bordering beige is a big no-no. So this is a dark grey. Um, and obviously I'm wearing black. And then the other fabric I bought, so they're both loop back French terries. And this, I can't remember, viscose, it doesn't feel that viscose but it has anchors on it. And I thought that this one, I mean it's just black, I thought this one would make a nice shirt. Viscose does tend to crease up, whereas this one doesn't seem too bad. So maybe it's a lawn. I think it is viscose, but it, it doesn't feel as slinky. It doesn't feel as soft as some of the other ones. Um, and some of that I think is down to the price. So the fabrics that I purchased, um, I brought them from Rainbow Fabrics in London because they do good, they have good prices per meter. But this, these, the selection of fabrics that I've got 
you can tell that they are cheaper because I have bought more expensive viscoses and they just feel really soft and smooth. This doesn't, I mean it's not rough, but it doesn't feel as nice as some of the others, shall we say, but it might mean that it's more stable and not slip about so much. So some kind of shirt for that one. Um, this one I haven't washed yet, but it has, and if you can see, that's fixing, all these little black bits. And it's like fluff, except perhaps I could get it off with a lint roller, but I was like, I, and it's, it's almost starting to pill. I haven't even washed it or anything. So this is different. And this was about, I think, between four and five pounds a meter. And normally for French Terry, I would pay, say, between 13, around about 13, 14 pounds a meter. So, you know, nearly a third of the price. There's a reason for that. Anyway, I will use it, but it probably won't. It'll probably be maybe just a wearable muslin or something to slouch around in, but I'm not gonna, this isn't gonna be like a really nice garment that I make with it because it, the fabric just doesn't feel that great. So maybe um, a trial version of the Billy Sweatshirt by Tilly and the Buttons that I purchased this month as well, just to see what the sizing's like. So the stretch, mainly just one way, is a little bit of stretch the other way, but I've got two meters of that. And the other one I have made into something. Now this one is my first fail <laughs> of the year. This is the Danielle top by Sinclair Patterns. Nearly forgot then. So it's a bat wing top. Now I wore something like this on Boxing Day um, as a top, a ready to wear top that I bought from the charity shop. And so I wanted something similar. So it's quite fitted at the waist. And then it has this bottom band, which is quite thick, it's quite big. And the idea that that deep, should I say, the idea that that bit goes across your hips and you can sort of like scrunch it up and it's sort of slouchy, but it's not too oversized. So it gives you quite a good fit um, and on the sleeves as well. Now you can add um, a long cuff to this to make it full length or as it is, it's a three quarter length and then just turn over and stitch. I'm just conscious of my fit. I cut my finger today and now it's looking a bit red so hopefully they won't come up on camera because it looks just seen I was like oh that looks a bit gross. Anyway getting distracted. This is the back of it. So it has this crossover strap detail which it was a little bit of a nightmare to be honest with you and one of the straps came out and I'd already overlocked all the seams and I had to kind of like rip open a hole put it in and put it back. But the, what, the reason why it's a disaster is that the stretch this way, but not the other way. So because it's batwing, you cut this obviously as one piece. So when it comes to the sleeve, it's, it's the wrong way. So where you need the stretch, like here, that isn't, that's like the green line going. There's, I don't know, it's the way that the green goes. Um, let's have a look. It's just, yeah, so you've got to stretch like this, this way, but where the width of your arm is, that's the grain line. So there's no stretch. So this pattern definitely has to be made up in a two-way stretch. I'll put it on for you, just so you can see what it looks like. I'll put it on over the top of this. The idea was that I was going to wear it with a vest top. Um, so, you, you know, construct, I mean, it's, so tight on the arms, it's ridiculous. Right, oh, that's all. I feel like breathing. Right, I'll point you down. I'll point you down so you can see. You're also going to see the mess that I tried to hide. So this, it's like super tight. So even if I kind of folded it and scrunched it a bit, it's basically sitting at that widest point of my hips, so it's not great. So that's the back of it. So, you know, it's quite a nice pattern. Well, it's so, I mean, that's it. There is no stretch. Had, I, I made the petite version. So Sinclair Patterns, Sinclair Patterns do offer um, petite, regular and tall, I think. So I had, I sent this off for printing to Fabuloso. And so I selected the petite size because I'm 5'3". So I've not made any adjustments to this and 
the length and I mean although it kind of fits there I finishes there I think with a slight with a more stretchy fabric it would be so more slouchy it wouldn't be so skin tight it look fine um I actually quite like the size of it just it's just there's no room for movement and the thing is there's no way that I'm going to lose like four inches off my hips it's not going to happen um and so that's really what it, but that's really what it would need in this kind of fabric so I'm going to treat it as a wearable muslin because again it was the same price as the other one but I really I really like the style of it but it's just the fabric has let it down and also I've noticed my posture is terrible lately I've been having issues with my neck and my husband quite often will say that um this shoulder is higher than this one and he's like <laughs> pushes it down he's going why is that shoulder like an inch higher than this and I found if I'm wearing like a, a boat neck or even a cardigan it's like slipping off that shoulder because that's like sitting lower lower down than that one I need a crunch I need a neck a neck crick I think to get things straightened because I'm wearing this and I can feel it almost hanging off that side now I saw this obviously funny exercise on YouTube a flushed up it's called YWTL I don't know if you've heard of it so the idea is that it's for your neck anyone who has a neck hump now I sort of felt that oh, it's going down a bit my neck my head has been going a lot I do a lot of driving I mean a lot every day um, it's over an hour round trip and then in the afternoon round trip school schools and work so it's like over two hours a day I'm in the car and I feel like that sometimes and then if I'm editing on the laptop if I'm on the sewing machine it's like that if I'm cooking I'm leaning over the pot and I feel like I'm constantly like that so if anyone else has feels like their neck is sort of like mm, and their posture isn't that great this is supposed to really help so it's called YWTL I'm going to put the camera back a bit so I've got a bit more room so you can see and maybe you can join in with me so if you just if you're having this as a cup of tea if you're on your sewing machine right now just stop stand up and join with me it won't take long at all also I don't mean to really be really bossy <laughs> so so you start off so it's Y so you make a Y and you make sure that your arms are not forward so they're like in line with your shoulders so you're going Y so really stretch up and then W you're going to come down and form a W so again you're going you don't want to go forward you're going like this like this so your shoulders blades are going back so it's Y W then you go T so really going to stretch out like that again make sure your shoulders are back and then the L it's a bit tricky you're going to put your elbows into your side and keep your hands out like that to form the L and apparently uh, according to this video I watched that keep doing that and it's supposed to help if you've got a neck hump um, or your neck sort of bad posture that's supposed to help so Y W T and L so if you're gonna um, if you have a go see if you have a go and um, message me down below in the comments if you think that it's helping at all or if you've even heard of that last time I spoke to you I showed you um, my, what my dad made me for Christmas which was a wooden seam ripper and that was in one end and then the other end so it pulls out I said oh this is a point turner but it's too sharp so I'm not going to probably use that end well everyone virtually everyone commented and said uh, that's not a point turner that is an owl so the reason why it's sharp and pointy is because it's meant to make holes in things not it might make holes in things and it shouldn't so yes it's supposed to make holes in things and also a lot of people said you can then use it to help push fabric through the sewing machine so Thank you to everyone who um, who told me the correct um, the correct use of it, and the, I felt really silly. So this was my seam ripper and owl jewel headed. So I just wanted to let you know that everyone has told me that, 
and so now I know. Um, I have an update for trousers. Now, Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room, she is setting themes for Friday Sews. I am not always on board with that because it's, I'm just sometimes a bit late filming and I don't realise what the theme is. But I saw this afternoon that she put that this week's theme is going to be UFOs. And is there anything that, you know, like a UFO that you would go back to which you've had for ages? I would say mine is trousers. Now I have a trouser playlist, but this week I did something maybe mad, some of you might think, like why on earth are you going down that route again? But I can't let it go. I really want to make trousers. So I spent a good two hours looking at sewing patterns for petites because I figured that the trouser patterns that I've tried before, the proportions are wrong. I always find they're like long in the crotch and then when I shorten the front crotch and then the back crotch is shortened too much so then I put an inch back in the back and then that puts it back in the front and I sort of go around in loops because the trousers, um, the moment you make one adjustment, it has an effect somewhere else. So if you are fitting them, you literally have to do one adjustment and then make them up and then one at a time because they can all have a knock-on effect to each other. Anyway, I had to look around and I was like, I was looking for absolutely ages. And then I came up because I really want um, a fly front and either elastic in the back or flat at the back. Ideally elastic in the back because then it allows for fluctuating weight but I found a pair of trousers which are fly front but the darts at the back they are flat but I suppose you could eliminate the darts and put elastic in but I don't want to mess with the pattern but it's by Vicky Sews and it's the Russian Pattern Company and she has patterns which are in um, height ranges I think she has three so I had to convert because it said the height in centimetres and I only know that I'm five foot three so I had to look um, and so the bottom like height range I was at the very top measurement for that. Um, I can't remember what that is now. So I purchased the the lowest um, high range for that one. And so I just cut them out and it's designed like combat trousers with a big pocket on. But I thought I'll leave that off. I just want to see, I want to have pockets when I have a fly front just to see what the general shape is and the sort of size. They did come up quite big because the annoying thing about that is that they sell single size patterns which I don't know about you, but I mean, I have a 10 inch difference between my waist and my hips. And if I put on weight or if I lose weight, those proportions always stay the same. So um, I always have that 10 inch difference. It doesn't matter what size or size or weight I am. I always have that So you know, some if I put on my waist, they put on my hips and same. So for me, I'm always usually like, a, I have to gray between sizes. So I thought I'll purchase the hip, the pattern according to my hip measurements, then I can take it in the waist, which wasn't too bad. Um, I did find that the legs were still quite big, so I have sort of slimmed down, slimmed down, and then I probably took a bit too much off the hips and me need sort of letting out a bit. But I'll show you um, a quick bit of footage that I made. I bought some stretch Bengalane fabric from Rainbow Fabrics, it was 99p a metre. Then I realised after I cut it out that the stretch was the opposite way to what I'd cut the trousers out. So these are cut as though the trousers, ha the fabric has no stretch to it. So I thought actually that's quite a good test to see what the pattern is like. I will show you the footage now and you can let me know what you think. I think they hang quite well at the back. There's no bunching up. Um, I don't feel like I've got loads of drag lines, but they they still feel quite roomy in the leg, like a bit too roomy, but I'm worried that if I slim them down too much, then that is going to make them more fitted. And sorry, I felt like I was going to sneeze or cough, so it's got some water. I'm, I'm worried that if I make them too fitted, that that is going to create drag lines or bunching. So I'm not sure. Um, now, I think there's quite a good rough pattern. The, I bought the Russian version, so they do have translated versions of their patterns in, in English. Um, they are more expensive because obviously you're paying for the translation of the pattern. Um, and because I've had, I've bought and tried so many trouser patterns over the last few years, I didn't want to spend out much money. So this was actually on sale for their regular price for $1.99, which I think is about £1.50, something like that but it's all in Russian. So the um, the the one, the English um, English instructions, that's about eight pounds or eight dollars, I'm not sure. 
pounds or dollars, which one it is, but it's a little bit more expensive. So I thought I would just buy the Russian one. And actually, when, because I've made trousers before, I just can't get them to fit. It's not like I don't know how to make trousers. And actually, they've got loads of photo instructions. So I think I could easily make them just from the photos because I've made trousers before. But they have, um, there's tabs at the ankle and there's obviously a pocket down the side and I haven't put the waistband on. So these trousers would be a higher waist because I have literally just made them up without putting the waistband on. So I haven't, did I, oh, I think I may have cut it out, but I just haven't like put it on. But the reason why I'm not going to buy any good fabric, shall we say, at the moment is because I am doing Slimming World and I, I'm a bit I'm quite a way away from my target weight. I have put on weight um, because of lockdowns. The first one, 2020, although I was exercising, I did a lot of baking and eating. And then sort of, you know, life stress is a bit of an emotional eater, I suppose. So whether I'm like, good, you celebrate and have a party or, you know, go somewhere as a celebration or a meal out, then you sort of enjoy food. Or sometimes feel a bit stressed or a bit cheesed off. Oh, let's just eat some food. So, um, my weight fluctuates naturally anyway, but I need to, for myself, I want to get back into some, uh, some of the clothes that I've made previously, some of the jeans I've got hanging up in my wardrobe. I've done it before, after I had the children, I did Weight Watchers, which is now called WW, but I did the old Weight Watchers plan for both my children and got back. I am a bit of a yo-yo dieter, but at the minute I feel like my size, um, I have sort of weight hanging around that I'd rather not be there. So I'd like to just um, lose a bit more before I then go for fitted clothes. So I don't want to stop making clothes because I've done that in the past and now I felt really miserable because nothing really fitted properly. So I am sort of in between sizes at the moment. So I may find that I am going more towards things with stretch. So it might be that the trousers that I make, I sort of slim down a bit and then have um, fabric with a bit of stretch. So then that gives me that sort of extra leeway as well. But I just wanted to share with you that I am, um, it's looking positive for once about the trouser making. So I feel like um, there is hope. So if you are petite or perhaps if you're really tall and you're finding it hard and you don't want to make, you know, you're having to adjust tra um, trousers or pants patterns so much and a lot of the pattern designers don't put lo um, lengthening and shortening lines on trouser patterns. They'll do them on bodices and skirts and dresses and things but not on trousers and you know not everyone has, like you can't shorten trousers just by the bottom because you've got the, where the knee goes, it's going to fit, fit, you know, it's going to fall in a different kind of place. You, it's not as simple as where you take that out from the bottom. You've got to take that length out from somewhere. And I think that's where I've really struggled is knowing where that length or the shortening lies, where, the, where that has to go. So I'm hoping that um, this Vicky Sews pattern is going to be a winner. So I will keep you posted on my channel about that one. Um, but I just wanted to share it in case you have similar issues and maybe worth checking out. So if you want to spend a little bit more, you can get the translated one in English. Or if you want to just um, to see uh, cut it out a rough shape, it's really super cheap. I printed it at home, so it didn't really, it didn't use up much ink, and it's not many really pages either, so it's really easy to do. But obviously, they do. I think, I'm sure they do have copy shop options. You kind of have to guess a bit because it's all in Russian. But I looked for like, I don't know whether it may be. I could pick out an A4, so I was like, all oh, right, that's the one I need to print at home. But you can buy the version to print at a copy shop and then get it printed out that way. Thank you to everybody who's joining in with Sew Your Colours 22 on, over on Instagram. There are a few mates coming through now and it's really interesting actually to see um, different colour palettes because obviously, I, like I said, I'm a cool winter and if you see someone who's an autumn autumn palette and then they make those colours, I mean, the, some of them are colours that I couldn't wear but when you see them on somebody, um, it's it's really interesting. So I'm finding it quite encouraging to have a look. So pop, don't forget to pop on over and just put in the hashtag SoYourColors22. There's two ways of spelling it because I've bagged both hashtags at the start of this challenge. So the American spelling with colors without the U, 
that is exactly the same as the same challenge with the one with you but I just wanted to make sure that everybody was included in that so please check that out and don't forget if you are making things to join in if you tag me I can then share it on my social media as well if you'd like to if you'd rather it wasn't shared um, you can just use the hashtag and still have a private account that you're taking part but I just wanted to say thank you for anyone who's joining in getting their colours done on the app showing their colour palette and helping with fabric choice because I think it will really help us this year to be a bit more sustainable in our sewing and make things that we will enjoy wearing and that we will love. Um, just wanted to also give a shout out to anyone who participated in Frugal Frocks last year. Um, there is another challenge coming up in March which is now the wheels are in motion from Ruan and from Sam. I will link their channels down below all about um frugal i can't remember what it is frugal something so frugal 21 um, i'll put it on screen the name of what the new challenge is going to be but whereas last year's was frugal frocks all about dresses i'm using fabric free mustache and a free pattern this is going to maybe make an item of clothing whatever that may be as long as it's a free pattern and i think that's great because outside of summer i don't really wear dresses so for me, that's like, you know, so you can do t-shirts, tops, blouses, you can do dresses. I don't know, are there any tra free trouser patterns? I'm not sure there are out there, but you may prove me wrong. So um, there will be more details flowing through, but don't forget to check out that hashtag. If you haven't checked out the So My Colours, So Your Colours, I'm saying it wrong now. If you haven't checked out the original video I did of So Your Colours 22, I will link that on screen now and I will see you again next time.